Hello there, this is Dr. Tuakli, and today I just want to have a chat with you about COVID. There's a lot going on, it's very confusing, and I would like to be able to give my patients and everyone else who's interested some health education regarding COVID and let you know what's going on. Things will change from day to day, and it's a very fluid situation, as you all know. One thing you can guarantee, I will not lie. I will tell you what I know and hopefully be able to express things in a way that makes it simple for you to understand. So please follow along with me. I may not have all the answers, but I will tell you up-to-date information as far as I know it. So today I want to talk about testing. Ideally, we should all get a test. Everyone should go get a test right now. That would be an ideal world. The United States does not have enough tests to test everyone. If you have the opportunity, should you get a test? Maybe, but then again, you have to think about that. If you get tested today, how does that help you? Because if your neighbor is not being tested and you meet the neighbor sometime later, then you'd have to get tested again. So unless everyone is tested, it doesn't really help unless you have symptoms. My point is that the testing situation right now is inadequate. I think everyone, including the politicians, realize that because it would be best for us to test everyone, keep the people who have a positive virus, active virus load at home, and then everyone else could get back to work. But that's not the case. There are two types of tests. One is a blood test, which is very hard to find, and one is a nose swab. So let's take them one at a time. The nose swab tests to see if you actually have virus in your airways at a given time. It can also tell you how much virus you have, and then hopefully give us an idea of how contagious you might be. That sounds pretty straightforward, except for a few things. Number one, the plastic swabs that are needed for the nasal swabs are rapidly going out of stock. There's a shortage of the actual swabs, even though there may be more tests available. Another trick with that is, if it's not done properly, you may get a false negative. There's a lot of discussion about whether it should be done through the nose or through the nasopharynx, which is the nose and the part that goes down to the throat. Ideally, you would get the nasopharynx, but you can imagine if someone has to stick something far enough down your throat, they may not be able to do that. The other kind of testing is a blood test. And that's a test that will look to see if someone has an antibody to the COVID-19, to the coronavirus. How does that help? Well, if you have developed antibodies, we can assume that you've already been infected, even if you don't know, and you may actually be immune. So now you are okay to go back to work or to mingle with other people. The question is, how long does that immunity last? If you remember, as a kid, if you wanted to be immune against, for example, whooping cough, you had to get about three vaccines to make you immune. So one infection does not necessarily mean that you're immune, but it could. It definitely will give you more immunity than you could get otherwise. So that is the issue with the testing. We don't have enough tests. That's a political issue. That, that is an issue that's gone by the wayside. We can't talk about why we didn't have enough tests but we know that at this point in time, we still don't have enough tests. So I wanted you to understand why testing is important and I'll cover some other topics in the next few videos. I hope you found this video informative and I'm looking forward to getting questions and being able to answer them for you.